Okay. Hello, everyone. Just getting set up here. Welcome to the live stream. I am Robin Shaw, your teacher. I hope everyone can hear me and see me. I hope so. I haven't been here in a while, but I'm here today. I'm just Going into my WhatsApp group, getting people to join, get some people in here, get my students in here. If you don't belong to my WhatsApp group, uh, I recommend you uh, join my WhatsApp group. You can find the description or in the description, you can see the link to my WhatsApp group. All right, let's see who's here. I see Layla's here. Hello, Layla. I miss you. And who else is here? I see Pretty Cat. Hello. And Billy's here again. Nice to see you again, Billy. If you are if you are here, let me know. And you guys should be asking English questions now. Oh, Catherine's here. Hello, Catherine. How are you doing? Layla, I'm doing well. I miss you so much, Robin. Yes. I've been I have been very busy this week and next week and uh, for the next few weeks I'll be very very busy. Parker, hello, Piedad, Lorenz, Serrano, hello, welcome. You guys should be asking questions now. You got I'm sure you got a lot of English questions. Let's get started with the English questions. Ah, nice to see you, Piedad. Piedad's your first name? Oh, Catherine's finished work now. Oh, yeah, Catherine works very hard in Korea. All right, guys, get your questions in. I've been filming videos all day. I, I filmed fi 10 videos today with Lynn Teacher. So if you're watching my Instagram, you saw a picture uh, of Lynn and I on my Instagram. All right. Yes, sir. My teacher, my first name is Piedad. Good to know. Good to know. English questions. I'm talking, but I want to be teaching English right now. Sewan Karkuk, hello, welcome to Learn English Live, where we teach live. You guys can ask any English question and life question, and I will do my best to answer. And Edward Fitness PG, hello, I'm from Guatemala. I went to Guatemala, Guatemala, Guatemala in February. Guatemala City and Tikal. Very beautiful. Sayade, I forget how to pronounce your name. Sayade, hello, welcome. Uh, Layla, I saw this teacher, Lynn. She looks so cute. Yeah, I guess Lynn's cute. And Saki Mohammed has an English question. Finally, an English question. Hi, Robert. I want to ask you a question. How to use of? Uh, Saki, I'd like to help you, but I'm not sure exactly how to use of. Of is a preposition, and that can be used in many, many, many ways. Uh, do you have an example sentence, Saki? Layla, I have a great passion for learning English. Is my sentence correct? You are correct, Layla. And yes, you have a great passion. Very, uh, Layla has a lot of, a lot of passion. Piedad at 8.30 a.m. here in Colombia. Oh, good morning. Robin, when I speak English with my friends, sometimes, you got to use sometimes with an S. Sometimes they say, he is flying in the sky and I am walking in the sky. Are they phrases? 
Uh, they sound like idioms. He is flying in the sky. I'm not sure what that means. And I'm walking in the sky. I'm not sure what that means. I'll just do a quick check. I, I don't think they always do that. They might have said that once because those are not... Those are not common expressions. We have an idiom uh, walking on air. That is an idiom. I'm walking on air, which means I'm very uh, happy. I'm very excited. Uh, that's the only idiom I know, but the other ones I'm not sure about pretty cat. Saki, no, don't have, but I want to know how to use sir of. Well, geez, there's thousands of ways to use of. Uh, let's see. So I'll put the definition here. And the definition of of used for belonging, something belonging, related to, some relationship, or some connection. So let's see. So uh, I think, uh, Saki, you're going to need to look at a lot of sentences to start to build your sense of how to use of. I just put a sentence here. I got married in the summer of 2000 the summer of 2000 so that summer is connected to the year 2000 uh, another another example this is a picture of my family so on the picture yeah your family so, Saki, I can't really teach of. That's very basic. You need to go through a lot of uh, example sentences. Uh, yeah, you guys have to understand. I'm doing my best. It's really hard to teach by live stream. I'm doing my best. Live stream, you know, it, it's not perfect, right? I'm not I'm not the perfect teacher on live stream. Usually teachers uh, have time to prepare their class, but uh, I have no time. Sade, can can you tell me is help uncountable? Well, help uh, help is usually a verb, so. When we're this is why example sentences are important because uh, what sentence are you trying to use because help is usually a verb please help me that's a verb and verbs are not countable or uncountable uh, it can be uh, it can be used as a, a noun he needs a lot of help and in that case uh, you know as a verb it's more common but as a noun it would be uncountable he needs a lot of help not he needs a lot of helps so uncountable carrie when can we meet new teachers on your live stream i don't know carrie i keep trying to get teachers here but uh yeah this channel needs more support guys so again please help support the channel you know the teachers got to spend. The teachers have to spend money to uh, to travel here or get equipment at their home, and uh, I, I try to support them with my own money, but that's not enough. I need uh, a little more support, guys. Very close to getting some more teachers on this channel. Uh, please help me out. Some of you have already helped a lot. Thank you very much. Maryam, hello. I'm doing fine. And Lilia Lily, you came back 
late a little. You came back a little late. Which one is correct? The second one is correct. You came back a little late. Oh, you guys got questions on Wanderson. Hi, hey Wanderson. Do you have any English questions? Omar, how many of you love this teacher? Would that be a good example? How many of? How many of? Yeah, that's a good example of of. How many of you? Lily, ah, Lily. She'd always loved that name. She'd is she had always loved or she would. Well, what do you think, Lily? Lily, ah, Lily. Which ones? Because uh, had and would have the same contraction form. So which one do you think? Which which one sounds better? Uh, Lily, ah, Lily, Layla. She had always loved that name. She would always loved that name. So would uh, is not talking past tense. Now you have a clue in the word loved. Loved is past tense. And had is used as past tense of half. So I know because of loved that it has to be had. Because we're talking she had always loved in, in the past. Pretty cat. I stopped to make errors in grammar and I stopped making errors in grammar. Is there any difference between them? Yeah. Uh, we want to use I stopped making errors. Uh, stopped is is a verb that does not work well when you're comparing the gerund form. Uh, uh, sorry, when you're <laughs> stopped is a verb that doesn't work well followed by a gerund form like making. Uh, and uh, oh, sorry, I'm confusing myself. Stopped is a word is a special verb and what happens after stop well you can have the infinitive the base verb uh, to make or you can have the gerund making any other verbs so uh, another one i like to use is to smoke and smoking so when you're using the verb uh, stopped uh, it doesn't work well to use the two different forms the gerund and the infinitive so you got to be careful with the verb stopped. Now in your sentence there, I stopped making errors is correct. If you said I stopped to make errors, that kind of means you were you were working and you stopped working to make some errors. So it's very different meaning. So pretty cat and everyone here. Yeah, I explained it uh, terribly. <laughs> but if you're using the verb stopped, uh, Stop to make and stopped making are different. They have different meanings. Another verb, different story, but stopped, be very careful. Lily, ah, Lily, Robin, if you need any help, let me know. Maybe I can do something for you to help. Thank you. You already helped me a lot, Layla. Pia dad, she have, no, you got to use past tense, Pia dad, she had. And if you're using present tense, you, you would say she, she has, not have. You cannot say she have. She has is present tense, past tense, she had. So, so. Hello, sir. How are you? Long time no see. Yes, very long time. I'm doing well. How are you? Lilia, Layla, I also want to know is she would always love that name. Uh, that's possible about the future. She would always love that name. Uh, but we would probably say uh, you don't have enough information. Uh, if you named her Rose... She would always love that name. Something like that is possible. And you can use a contraction. She'd always love that name. 
Sadiq, hello, hello, welcome back, Sadiq. Hannah, wow, a, long, a lot of people coming back I haven't seen in a long time. Welcome, welcome. So Piedad, she had always, let's use the contraction, she'd always love that name. She'd always love that name. Fanny, I have a car and he has a car. To make a sentence belongs, should use has, have for he, she. Yeah, he has, she has. All right, you guys are asking a lot. I'm going to go to the board. This marker is not too dark, so I'll all right. So yeah, you gotta follow that rule. Those rules here. I have, he has, she has, it has, you have, we have, they have. All right. That's the uh, that's your present right now. Belong if you you know I have a car. She has a car. Past tense. This is gonna be had had I had he had you had like that. Okay, so you gotta follow these rules. And negative I don't have. He doesn't have, you don't have. Lily, ah, Lily, how do you know that she'd, you'd, I'd, she had, you had, I had, or mean she would, you would, I would? As I pointed out in your sentence, you used past tense for loved. You're telling me. Uh, that the sentence is past tense. So I know she'd is she had. So there's clues in the sentence. Uh, also, if you're using... I gotta erase this. All right, wait, it's the same thing. I didn't. Right there, I have uh, enough information to know if it's would or had. So this is past tense right here. So I know she had loved blah, 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 blah. And this is uh, just the base verb. She would love blah, 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 blah. Uh, this, this helps, but not every case. It's a good starting point. All right, I'm going to go on. Hi, Robin. I missed your games, guessing vocabulary. I'll go back to the games, Ari, when I have more time. Maybe in August. I have a lot more time in August. And if I have more time, then I can create better lessons here. Irving, hello. Welcome. Oh, Layla, you got a you got a good question now. She'd always. 
we need the verb, right? What's the verb after always? That verb is important. So she'd always, it could be she had or she would. We don't know. We need to see the verb after always. So which verb comes after always? And then I can tell you if it's had or would. Akraf, hello. The flowers are on behalf of my mom. I tried to understand it, but I can't. Could you help me to understand that? Hmm, that's a little, uh, that's a little unique, not so common expression. The flowers are on behalf of my mom. So the word behalf. So I'm giving you flowers. My mom is not here. So I'm telling you, uh, these flowers are on behalf of my mom, which means I'm not giving them to you. I didn't buy them. My mom bought them. She's not here. I'm going to give them to you. So that person is not here, but they are doing or giving you something. So uh, another example. I got to type, so I speak on behalf of my sick brother. So that means my brother is speak. Maybe he's very, very sick or yeah, he's very, my brother's sick. He's very, very sick. And I have to speak for him. I have to make decisions for him. He can't, he can't speak. He can't make decisions. I have to do it for him. So I would use expression on behalf of. I speak on behalf of my brother, my sick brother. All right, I hope that helps. Yeah, Piedad, important to know the verbal tense of the verb. Yep. Fanny, what does, what does this mean? Then a toast to the whirlwind that is your life. Well, which parts of that, Fanny, do you not understand? Do you understand what a toast is? Do you understand what a whirlwind is? Do you understand those words, Fanny? What is a toast? What is a whirlwind? You have to know those words before you can understand the sentence. Christina, he have children in the school. No, Christina, I just taught on the board. You have to watch, you guys, please pay attention, students. I have. That's the rule. You cannot break the rule. He, she, it has. That's the rule. You cannot break the rule. So, he have. Christina, he, that's has. Anastasia Maslenikova. Teacher, could you explain what's the difference between present and past perfect forms? Anastasia. Esther should be back this Tuesday. She answers the grammar questions. I don't like to answer the grammar questions. Sorry, Anastasia, because they take a long time. And I, I'm not a good I'm not a good grammar teacher. So it takes me a long time to explain that. And uh, I, I can explain it. if you bring in if you bring in the example sentences, I'll help you out. But you're asking me just to teach a whole lesson to you about uh, 
tenses, grammar, or uh, yeah. tense is the, uh, what did you ask? Present and past perfect forms. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Sorry, Anastasia. Bring in some example sentences, and I'll tell you if you're right, and I'll help you then, but I'm not going to teach a lesson about grammar. Fanny, what is a diff? What a different uh, Fanny, we gotta fix your questions. Uh, everyone here, you got it. This is what is the difference between? This is the question you have to ask, guys. What is the difference between such and such? So, Fanny, what is the difference between dare and brave? Well, Fanny, go to the dictionary. Bring in one sentence of dare, bring in one sentence of brave, and let's figure it out together. Lilia Lily, I am going to give flowers to Robin. I'm going to give Robin flowers. Which one do native speakers use more in their conversations? I'm going to give flowers to Robin. I'm going to give Robin flowers. Both of them are okay. Carrie, can I call middle-aged men Mr.? You can call any man you don't know Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Excuse me, Sir. If you don't know the man, you can call them Mr. or Sir. For women, excuse me, ma'am. Or excuse me, miss. Say, Wade, I have been always speaking English, but I haven't a good chance. What do you mean a good chance to practice English? Yeah, Piedad is assistant teacher today. Thank you for your help, Piedad. Lily, I, Lily, I bought some sugar for make cookies. No. I bought some sugar for making cookies. Because uh, you're using making, you would have to use to make. That's possible. I bought some sugar to make cookies. That That's possible. And I bought some sugar uh, for making cookies. That's possible. Which one is correct and why? Well, I don't know why it's correct. Just we would say, I bought some sugar to make cookies. I bought some sugar for making cookies. I don't know the reason why. That's why I have to get better teachers who can quickly tell the reason why. Uh, well, I can tell you one reason why. After, we don't usually have four base verb, uh, base verb. So, I guess I'm smarter, or not smarter, but I guess I can tell you a little reason why. Uh, if we have the for and the verb, it's usually, it's always ing. I think this situation for base verb, I don't think it's possible in English. I can't think of an example. I can't think of an example of for base verb. It always has to be for ing. So... You can have two eat. That's possible. Thong Lee. Lee. I think your name's Lee, but you put L-E. There is no chance. It is no chance of find. There is no chance of finding a solution to the pollution problems in the near future. There is no chance.
Mon. What do you mean, Mon? What's Mon, sir? Can I apply UK passport or can I make UK passport? Which one is correct? Uh, well, I think if you're a foreigner, you want to up. Well, I think both of them can be correct. Can I apply for a UK passport or can I make a UK passport? Both of them can be correct. I would say the first one is better, but I think both ways can be correct. Sleepwalker, hello. Irving, when do you become a mister? When do you get married? Uh, mister, mister is not about marriage. Every man is a mister. Every man in the world is mister. Uh, when do I get married? I don't know. Anastasia, example, what is the difference in translation? He has lost the watch and he had lost the watch. Uh, a, a big problem with uh, example sentences, guys, especially with tenses. Uh, you're just, you're not giving enough information in your sentence. Uh so he has lost the watch. He had lost the watch. These are not complete sentences. Uh, these are not full sentences. You're not using the grammar correctly. So just to compare two small parts of the sentence, it's not really fair. You guys should try and make a full sentence using the grammar. So for example, he has lost the watch. You are making a statement about now. I'm telling you right now, he has lost the watch. And he had lost the watch. I'm going to go back in the past. So I wouldn't say he had lost the watch. I would say he had lost the watch two days ago. I would give some time. You didn't put the time, Anastasia. So you're making the wrong sentence. He had lost the watch two days ago. But if he has lost the watch, I'm just making that statement now. Yeah, thank you, Pidan. Our dare and brave can be the same meaning. I dare you to climb. All right. I dare you to climb. That's... And I brave to climb the mountain. Oh, this, the first sentence is correct. The second one is wrong. Uh, so, no. They don't have the same meaning. Uh, okay, I'll help you out, Fetty. Dare and, and brave do not have uh, the same meaning. They're very different words. I'm not sure why you think they're the same meaning. Uh, did you check the dictionary? Because a dare is uh, you are challenging someone and brave is an adjective to describe someone who can do many things. Now, brave people usually do dares. So if you said, I dare you to climb this tree uh, and the person said, yes, they are probably a brave person, but dare and brave are different words. I dare to climb the mountain. If you dare to climb the mountain, then you are a brave person. Because your action makes you brave. Hannah, Robin, how can we say in, in, another, in another way, thank you, thanks a lot, formal. Uh, well, the formal is I appreciate. Your help, something like that. 
That is the formal way. The most common way is thank you or thanks a lot or thanks very much. But if you want to get formal, I appreciate your help. Sleepwalker, I have already stood it, understood it. I had been wrong. How to write this sentence? I was wrong. Both of them can work. Again, you guys, you're not using the grammar correctly. So, uh, you need, so if you're using I had, you need some other time source. I had been wrong last night when I was fighting with my wife. All right, you need a little more time uh, expression in if you want to use had, had been. If you just want to make a statement, I was wrong. That's possible. Teacher, in your opinion, how can music help people? Well, I don't recommend music. I never recommend music uh, for studying English. But if some people really enjoy uh, listening to music and reading lyrics, do it. But I, I usually don't recommend that as a very good way. But I don't want to say it's a bad bad way. It's, it's a way. It's a way. Uh so, Wanderson, if you really love learning English from music, keep doing it. For the other people, if you don't, didn't start that, maybe that's not a good way. Lily, ah, Lily. I will not be able to watch Robin's live stream. I couldn't watch Robin's live stream. What is the main difference between these sentences? Uh, I will is Layla. <laughs> you should know this by now, Layla. Will is uh, your future tense. You're talking about the future. Every sentence with will, that's going to be the future. I will not be able to watch Robin's live stream. You're talking about the future. The second sentence, I could not. So now you're talking about the past. I could not ro watch Robin's live stream. All right, so there's a very big difference. One is talking about the future. One is talking about the past. Fanny, how about I bet you to climb? Bet is similar to dare, but bet is more of money. I bet you to climb five dollars. I bet, or usually you bet. Uh, uh, bet is getting a little more complicated, so I got to think. Uh, yeah, bet is usually uh, some money is is involved in this situation i would say i bet you can't climb i would say something like this so bet is usually used the in the negative i bet you can't Hello, Asad. Nine minutes ago. Oh, Leila, you saw someone who looked like me with a baby. You were. You want to say you were traveling to America. All right. Thank you, Leila.
Omar, I love listening to Robin's, Mr. Robin, you gotta call me Mr. Shaw. Mr. Shaw's lectures or Robin's lectures. Everyone, well, there's, which sentence makes more sense? Oh, you, I love, you cannot, Omar, you cannot speak for everyone. You can only speak for yourself. Because I'm, sur I'm sure there's some people that don't love listening to uh, Robin's lectures. So you should, Omar, you should say, I love. That's your opinion. Layla, I'm used to being unloved by everyone. Did I use, I'm used to being, used, I'm used to being correctly, yes? What's bahasa in my bahasa there in your dictionary? Well, Fanny, listen up. I do not correct. I, Fanny, 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 Fanny. If you see, if anyone sees a mistake in a dictionary that is not English, it is not my job to explain why your dictionary that is not English correct. So, Fanny, I, I don't like this situation, Fanny, where you expect me to fix other people's mistakes. You go to Oxford Dictionary. You go to Cambridge Dictionary. And you know what? Because of this, Fanny, I'm going to tell every student that they must go to Oxford or Cambridge and then come back. So, I just made a new rule. because I. It's not your fault, Fanny. A lot of students, they're checking... Bad dictionaries. And the bad dictionaries, they come here, they ask me the questions, and I got to fix other people's mistakes. Oxford and Cambridge, guys. That's where I'm going to send you. I'm only going to accept Oxford and Cambridge. Can't stop thinking about how to speak English with foreigners very well. Uh, you just you you don't need well, uh, very. You can cut out the uh, very. I can't stop thinking about how to speak English with foreigners well. Grace is here. Hello, Grace. The best student. The best student has just arrived here. You made a mistake in your sentence, Grace. And Grace, I have to tell you, the best student doesn't come late. Yeah, Grace, I saw all your images and video in the WhatsApp. You had a very special day. Hung Li, little she think that that this would be your last minute. You got the grammar wrong, Thong, but I know what you're trying to say. And the expression is going to be little did she think little did she think at this at the time that this would be her last meeting with Tony. Little did she think. Grace, get behind, postpone, put off. What are the differences among these? Get behind is delay. Postpone. Postpone and put off. Well, uh, you, Grace, that's a bigger question than you realize. Uh, if you get behind, it means you are slow in your work or study so uh you know maybe i should read five pages today uh, but i read three pages today so i started to get behind i'm starting to get behind my target postpone is if you have a meeting with someone and uh, you want to change the meeting 
okay, we can't have the meeting tomorrow, so let's postpone for another day. And put off means uh, you don't want to do something. So maybe you have to clean your room, but you put it off. You just avoid doing it. You don't want to do it. Layla, your questions are never stupid. My answers are stupid sometimes. Sometimes I feel shame about my answers. I'm taking a, a 20 second break. Someone's asking me questions, so. Oh, example sentence. I want to manage well my monthly budget because I don't want to, me getting behind my bills. Yep. So you should pay your bills, but you're getting behind. You didn't pay a bill. You missed a bill. My butt smoked. I don't know that expression, Layla. Sorry. The, I need more information, but that's not common. Theodora, how about Miriam Webster Dictionary? That's fine. Just don't use your local dictionaries. If you are seeing problems with your local dictionary in your language, don't ask me, guys. I'm not going to fix the dictionaries around the world. Mer Merriam-Webster is a great dictionary. So if you find a problem in the Webster's dictionary, yeah, then tell me. But the best student just arrived. Is it wrong? You should have has. The best student has just arrived. Carrie? Foreign, foreign is singular and foreigners is plural. No. Nope. Foreign is an adjective. I'm a foreign man. Uh, foreigner is the noun. So one foreigner. I am one foreigner. Two foreigners. Google Translate is never good. Never. If anyone is using Google Translate, you stop now. Please don't write any sentences here in Google Translate. Do not translate your own language into English and post your questions here. This is wrong. If you are using Google Translate, you are not learning English. All right, guys? Don't. The only time you need Google Translate, there's only one time. Somebody is dying and you quickly need to translate. Then you use Google Translate. But as a student, there is never, never a reason to use Google Translate. Layla, I stopped reading that book. I stopped... Uh, no, with the first sentence, Layla. Postpone and put off, all right? No, you don't, you can't substitute. No, I don't want to, no, the, the best expression is getting behind for that, Grace. Alexander, hello. Anastasia, what are the differences between goal, aim, and purpose? Well, Anastasia, bring me three sentences. One sentence uses goal, 
One sentence uses aim, and one sentence uses purpose. So you can you make your own sentence, or you can go to Oxford or Cambridge and bring in an example sentence. So Anastasia, I want to help you. So when you have these three sentences, they're going to help you to understand a little bit better than just me explaining. So everyone here, I'm a tool. I want to help you. You should use me for help. But you got to bring in those example sentences, please. That's kind of a rule. Now, I break that rule, but please bring in example sentences. Because I feel uh, I want to, I help students who deserve to be help, helped. So when I say I help students who deserve to be helped, that means Students have to show me that they are trying themselves. I really don't like students who come in here. They don't try. They just want the quick, easy answer. I don't like helping those kind of students. I like students who take the time, check themselves, bring in the examples. I explain. They start to understand the examples. That's how to use Learn English Live. That's how to use me. That's how to learn. That's how to improve. Just coming in, asking about words. I'm not a dictionary. The dictionary is better than me. You dictionary. What is you dictionary? No. 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 No, not you, Dictionary. Jeepers, creepers. Yeah, oh my. That's a expression. Oh, you're kind of surprised. Someone might say, Jeepers, creepers. Oh my. So, so, it is 11.22 p.m. Alexander, I scored the last goal for our team in the last match. Good sentence, and if it's true, good for you. When I helped my mom, Robin had already finished his live stream. Is my sentence correct? When I... Yeah, when I helped my mom, Robin had already finished his live stream. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Oh, I'm caught up on the questions. There's no more questions. So, yeah, you guys, I'm trying to help you. I hope Anastasia brings in three sentences. Come on, Anastasia, bring in me those sentences. Let's see if we can get a few more. Uh, few. Let's get some new people. Let's, who's new tonight? Tell me who's new. Tell me in the comments. Who's new? Tell me now. Don't be scared. Log into YouTube. Grace, you're not new. Grace, she only ever drives down the street to Landois for groceries. Why does it use down after drive? Uh, the down gives a, gives it a little more motion. Uh, motion gives an image of driving down the street. So we it creates this image of the street going down the street. I had studied English before I knew Robin. Looks fine. Pieta, dictionaries such as word reference and uh, Miriam Webster. We just call it Webster's Dictionary. What's word reference? 
I I don't I don't like word reference. So I don't know about word reference, so I don't trust it yet. Go play. Oh, welcome. Go play. Where are you from? Go play 1314. Karthikeya, she wakes up early morning. Is this? Uh, she wakes up, I, I think a little more natural. She wakes up early in the morning. She wakes up, you can say she wakes up early morning, but I think uh, it might be a little bit better. She wakes up early in the morning. Sayed Hussein, you're new. There's no such, Layla, there's no such thing as bothering me, me with questions. I want the questions. So, so, I will go to USA on, th th oh, oh, you got to say third, not th ND, and I, I would arrive on 31 May, correct or not? All right, I got to fix up your sentence, so, so, I like fixing sentences. So I will go to, and the USA needs y the. We got to say the USA. We got to capitalize. It's a country. And you put the and, I'm going to cut the and. And you use wood. Well, your sentence doesn't make sense logically because you say, I will go to the USA on the 3rd of May. I will arrive on 31st of May. How can you leave the 3rd and arrive the 31st? That doesn't make sense. Well, anyway, there's the first part. Grace, I stopped counting on her. Does this mean I don't believe in her anymore? Yeah, I stopped counting on her. I stopped tr trusting her. I stopped relying on her. Go play from Taiwan. Taiwan is a beautiful place. I've been to Taipei twice. I really love uh, Taipei. And you're learning English now. Welcome. Piedad, I had used word reference and I think it's very helpful, okay, because I can know the word in context and listen to pronunciation in American and British accent. Well, Cambridge, Cambridge Dictionary also gives American and British accent, but let's check out word reference. I'll just, let's put in a word. Let's put in Robin, because Robin is my name, but it's also the name of a bird. Word reference, okay. Hmm. If you like it, that's okay, but it's not really my style of diction. You must be using it as on an app because it doesn't look very good on the computer. Robin. Robin. Robin, 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 Robin. Great. Okay, I like it now. Alexander, aim, hmm, is more noun only in this word. I got what I aimed at. Aim could have many, many, many reasons. And you hit the target with a dart. You aim and you throw the dart and you hit the target. Karthik, thanks for your correction. No problem, that's why I'm here. Thanks for your good question. 
Fenny, to learn vocabulary, should I memorize from the dictionary? Nope. That is the opposite of how to learn vocabulary. <laughs> the best way, the only way, is reading. Keep reading. Read and read and read. You will master English grammar and vocabulary in a natural way. I promise you, I've done it with hundreds of students. You guys don't seem to believe that. I trust me, I'm a reading teacher. I'm not a grammar teacher, which means when I want to get a student from zero to fluent, we never study vocabulary lists. We never study grammar. All we do is I give them a reading course. And they just read, keep reading, and then after two years, they're very, very high level. Very, very high level. Lily, sometimes I feel my English was too slow before I joined your WhatsApp group. But after that, it is getting better. Okay, yeah, I think, Layla, your English is getting better. I hear you talking more and more. I think you're getting uh, better. I'm sure of it, Layla. I'm sure of it. I'm always very happy when I hear you speaking to other people in the WhatsApp groups, Layla. Cambridge is the UK. Alexander, the purpose of this stream is to help English learners to improve their language comprehension. Alexander, there are many purposes to this stream. Uh, yes, it helps people with listening. Whether they realize it or not, people are listening to me. It helps with your listening. I help with questions. Uh, I also give life advice sometimes. So there's many reasons. And maybe some people are just lonely uh, and like Carrie and just like to hear the sound of my voice. So there's many reasons. So Alexander, I hope you can gain some value to these live streams. I hope it can help your English. I hope it can help your life. And if you need help, you just ask me. Grace, I stopped counting on myself because I don't know what I like. I stopped counting on what I am doing now. Uh... We don't usually say I stopped counting on myself. Grammatically, it makes sense. But in usage, we don't usually use I stopped counting on myself. That's a little too negative. Anastasia has an example. Our main purpose, goal, aim. So Anastasia, in this sentence, they mean the same thing. So, uh, they are not 100% the same. Sometimes they are. So, I usually like to explain like this. So, a lot of vocabulary. So purpose, aim, goal. Yeah, sometimes they sometimes they mean the same thing. Sometimes purpose and aim might mean the same thing, but it doesn't mean the same as goal. And sometimes, you know, aim means something but it, it's not connected to purpose or goal, all right? So vocabulary like this is very tricky because you would have to show me 20 examples and I would go through and uh, so vocabulary like this, knowing the, the definition, knowing what the words means is not enough because you have to have a sense of when to use these words, which situations... Am I going to use purpose? Which situations I'm going to use goal? Which situations I'm going to use aim? 
a lot of the time they do mean the same thing, but sometimes they don't. Layla, Robin is a bird's name. Yep, Robin's a bird's name. Robin. Irish. Robin. Robin. Let's get it a little louder. Robin. Scottish. Robin. 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 U.S. Robin. Robin. Sorry. So, so, sir, I know lots. Lots doesn't have apostrophe S, just lots. Lots of English words, but I don't know how to make a sentence. You made a sentence there, so how can I improve? I want to use the word improve. Improve my English. Improve. So, so. Practice writing, reading. You got to do this every day, so so. Reading, writing, listening, speaking. You got to, if you guys are serious about English, hey, it takes work. It takes hard work every day. But I promise you, over time, you're getting better. You can't just study English once a week and, oh, why am I not getting better? Because you can't get better if you study once a week. It's every day. You might got to make the time. Karthik, does he wake up early in the morning? Yes, that's correct. And Piedad. For all students, you can use conjugador reverse. What is that? That's a Spanish dictionary. I don't think that's for all students. Oh, no. That's not for all students, but let's check it. It's not working well for me. Robert, I only want to know, do we have a live stream tomorrow or not? Not. Next live stream might be Tuesday with Esther. Tavika, hi, sir. Today I'm late because of today is very important. Poya day to Buddhist people. Okay, no problem, Tavika. Okay, I believe in you. I'll read English books every single day. So let's see my English two years later. Well, e reading English books is a start. Writing, listening, and speaking. And I think you do all of that, Grace. Uh... But Grace, uh, I'm going to, unfortunately, uh, there's a big difference between older learners and younger learners and how quickly they can uh, learn the language. So, uh, Grace, I know you're only 20 years old, but uh, an eight-year-old can learn English uh, faster. Alexander, you're making up random sentences. Oh, the purpose. Using, I get it now. I get it now, Alexander. Thank you, Layla. She likes to read. Thong Lei, me and Chris, Chris and I are on the way to work. Are they correct? Yeah, Thong Lee. Uh, grammatically, I think it's Chris and I, but native speakers are going to use both ways. So grammatically, Chris and I are on the way to work, but native speakers, they use both ways. So, I love the way American when it says your name, Robin, Robin. Robin. 
Robin. Cambridge. Okay, Fanny, good luck with that. Learning and learning. Same, same, Jan, welcome. Grace, what are you going to do with new teacher? I saw the pic of him and you. Is he going to do live stream too? Maybe. See, the problem, uh, Grace, and I'm going to get honest here. The problem is people don't like hard work. So a YouTube channel is very hard to grow. So you can see I have uh, 3,179 subscribers. So that's because of me and Esther. Esther working to grow the subscribers. So other people are like, I'm going to let... I'm going to let Robin grow to 10,000 and then I will start the live stream. So they, they don't want to do the hard work. They want me to do the hard work to build the channel and then they come in and it's very easy. So it's, it's hard to convince teachers, hey, help me build the channel. Jeepers, I'm too old to learning. No, nobody's ever too old. Fanny, I heard you pronounce not. It's same to pronounce nut. No, not, nut, not, nut. Pia, teacher with that website, you conjugate English verbs depending on the verbal tense. Besides, you can listen to pronunciation. Also, you can conjugate verb in Spanish as well. Well, if it works well for you, Piedad, keep using it. I'm a grandpa, Grace. Go play. I am 37 years old. No, not, not, not too late. You don't want to use apostrophe s. She's 37 years old. Piedad, for using conjugador reversal, you can ch choose the kind of language. Yeah, I saw many languages there. Then you should write the infinitive verb and finally click on the option conjugar. Okay. So other students can check that out. She's talking... I believe it's this site. All the better to hear you with, my dear. Is that from Little Red Robin Hood? Little Red R Riding Hood, not Robin Hood. Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to hear you with. So that's that sentence is from Little Red Riding Hood, the book, The Wolf says that to Little Red Riding Hood when she asks, Grandma, why are your ears so big? And uh, that's just the writing style of that book. That's not a common expression. Native speakers don't usually uh, express themselves that way. But my guess is that's from Little Red Riding Hood. All the better uh, to hear you with, my dear. Am I right, Layla? Is that from uh, Little Red Riding Hood? All right, I'm going to finish up now. Yeah, I'm getting tired. It's a long day. So I will go to sleep. In one minute. All right, thank you guys. I will see you in the future. Probably Wednesday will be my next day. Bye. Layla, which story? Was it Little Red Riding Hood? All right. Thank you, guys.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Anastasia, Abdul, go play. Fanny, Thong, Piedad, Grace, Alexander. Piedad again. Layla. All right, I'm going to leave. Goodbye, guys.